Um, all right, so I work for the Public Knowledge Project, or I have an affiliation with the Public Knowledge Project. I've been working it for 10 years, and most people know the Public Knowledge Project because of, uh, of OJS, but I wanted to give you just a very quick uh, of um, what PKP is. The Public Knowledge Project is a project, just like the name uh, suggests. It's actually a project at a university. It is not an organization that actually exists with any, as an actual legal entity in any way. It is really just a project out of, uh, primarily based out of Simon Fraser University Library. Um, the mission of the, of, of the project and the goal of the project that's now been going on for 20 years uh, is to increase the quantity and the quality of the knowledge that's available to the public and to increase the quantity and the quality of the global participation in the creation of, uh, in the creation of that knowledge. And we do that in a bunch of different ways. Uh, for like I say, for most people, this is uh, the way that we do this is just by thinking about open journal systems, the open source software that we do for managing and publishing uh, academic journals. Um, and the reason that I think people just sort of associate PKP with OJS primarily is because there's over 10,000 journals using open journal systems. Uh, they are distributed around the world with participation that's a lot in Latin America, in, um, in, uh, in, well, in North America, basically everywhere in the world. Uh, where we, there's just a lot of journal publishing uh, going on. But PKP is actually, we do a lot more than just uh, the software. So we do have software that's open journal systems. We have a conference software that's similar, although that one we've sort of shelved a little bit, but it's still out there and being used by a very dedicated community. We have software for managing uh, monographs, so academic monographs and edited volumes and, and so on. Uh, and we're working on a typesetting stack as well to be able to do conversions of manuscripts to, uh, to XML. Uh, and we do a lot of work around, we do a lot of research to inform of this, these activities and to help inform and have us engage with the community. So we do research around open access, research around altmetrics to understand audiences, around intellectual property issues, around economic models. I have a project around incentives. And we do a lot of this participating in meetings and doing advocacy work and trying to sort of shape the conversation around, um, around what uh, should global scholarship look like. And, and a lot of doing advocacy work around making sure that the perspectives of the kinds of journals that tend to use our software, journals uh, based out of uh, places that are not just the US and Europe, uh, that their perspectives and their needs are also being considered and taken into account when we're doing, um, when we're doing any of this work that we do. And we're also providing services, including hosting services that we're doing now to try to also sustain ourselves. So we do, we do publishing services, but we also provide free services uh, as well for uh, primarily for journals around preservation and indexing. Uh, a lot of people think of OJS, the old version of OJS, which was ugly. Uh, OJS 3 is new and now looks modern. So I just want to flash through some nicer looking OJS instances to try to dispel that notion that this 10 year old 15 year old software was ugly. Now these journals look like actual professional journals published in uh, 2018, not like journals that were being published in the web of 1995, right? Uh, this is, you know, so just to give you a sense, here's some, you know, just a few, a little a sprinkling of different journals. You may have noticed that some of these examples, you can't read them because they're not in English, because we are a project that really takes, uh, are really a global project with participation from journals from everywhere around the world, okay? Thank you. Uh, the uh, inside of OJS also looks nicer. Uh, this, uh, that, you know, this is in the, you know, they, and one of the nice things about new versions of OJS is that all of the, all of the OJS uh, uh, 3, the front ends can be skinned separate from the back end, which, which makes so much sense now, but that when we made OJS 2, maybe it did not, uh, it, you know, was not one of the considerations. So the inside of OJS is also much nicer, and it has sort of a, um, uh, and I could go and start discussing what are some of the changes around what that workflow. And so a lot of the pain points around OJS, a lot of the things that you might have heard around why people didn't, were not sort of satisfied with OJS, uh, we were getting a really positive and, and great reception from OJS3 addressing uh, a large number of those issues, if, if not all of them. Uh, and I sort of was asked to say, you know, what is sort of on our roadmap, uh, sort of interoperate with all of the things. Uh, basically, OJS already out of the box, is sort of, we're all, we've already have been thinking about how we integrate with all of the pieces of the workflow. And so it already plays nicely with a lot of the tools and services that are out there. Uh, and if it doesn't, it can. So there's a lot of things that sometimes we just don't have the developer resources to build, but that we're always happy if someone from those organizations or some of the other projects wants to say, well, we'd like an OJS integration and is interested in developing, uh, devoting some resources towards it. It's something that we're always happy to do. One of the things that we're doing, which is also just opening up, we have an API that was also built into OJS3 
to be able to interact with the content. Uh, and we are in every subsequent release adding more and more endpoints to that API to be able to do more things. So at the beginning, it was just to be able to pull out content from OJS, and now we're trying to also build in that API so people can um, uh, it sort of actually modify files and do different sort of steps in the workflow also through the API so that it's easier for integration with more of the things. So I like to say that we are the very model of a modern open source for open science tool. Uh, we do all of the open source, all of the, uh, we're multilingual, we're open source, we're scholar-led, and we're interoperable. Uh, and so we can just put a hashtag around that and call it a day. Thank you.